The Arduino Uno Q has a 3.3 volts microcontroller. In this video I'll show you how to check if your old shields are compatible with the new Arduino Uno Q. Shields are great. They are one of the main reasons why Arduino became so successful. The shield form factor has been copied by countless other companies creating a massive ecosystem that makes it incredibly easy to extend your Arduino's functionality. But let's dive right into the main question. How can you find out if your shield is compatible to the new Arduino Uno Q? What could go wrong if we just plug in an old shield? The good news is it's very unlikely that something will get damaged. It may not work or it may not work reliably. Why? Most shields have integrated circuits on them that connect to the Arduino. There are two possible scenarios. Your Arduino pin acts as an output and the shield pin as an input, or your Arduino pin acts as an input and the shield pin as an output. Sometimes it's a mixture of both. Let's look at the first scenario and see what could go wrong. Our Arduino output is connected to the digital input of an integrated circuit on the shield. In order to communicate, the Arduino pulls the pin to ground. This is low or to five, uh, I mean 3.3 volts on the new Q, this is high. And this signal travels to the integrated circuit on the other side and should be recognized as low or high. But how does that even work? It's basically like trying to understand if someone says yes or no, when they're a little bit mumbling. Voltage thresholds are how digital circuits make that decision. In fact, a digital input has electrical characteristics that you'll find in the chip's datasheet. But before we take a look at shields, let's start with a simple example. What if we connect two Arduino Unos together? Let's say we connect the output of an Uno Q to the input of an Uno R3. So if we set Q's pin to low, it will output zero volts. This should be interpreted by R3 as low. And if Uno Q outputs high, then it will output 3.3 volts. And this should be interpreted by R3 as high. Let's make this more clear. On one side, we have our zero to five volt Arduino Uno R3. And on the other side, our Q. And our Q starts right here. 3.3 volts. Inside of Arduino Uno R3, we have a chip called AT Mega 320P. Let's look at the data sheet. So this is the data sheet. It's from Microchip. It was originally an Atmel chip. And I'm interested in electrical characteristics. This is precisely what I'm interested in. Input low voltage and input high voltage, except for these two pins, but I don't care about these two pins. What is low and what is high? If we take a look at input low voltage, the input low voltage of the supply voltage from 2.7 volts to 5.5, and we have five, is minus 0 0.5. So we start here at minus 0 0.5 volts and we go up to 0 0.3 times VCC. Our VCC in this case is 5 volts so this results in 1.5 volts. This means that any signal between minus 0 0.5 and 1.5 will be interpreted as low. If we take a look at high voltage the minimum high voltage is 0 0.6 times VCC. So we're talking about three volts. This is right here. Up to VCC plus 0 0.5. So up to 5.5 volts. So any signal inside of this range will be interpreted as high. But what happens if we get a signal between these two? Well, we don't know, that's the point. Here it's guaranteed to be high and here it's guaranteed to be low. If our Arduino gets two volts, maybe it's low, maybe it's high, we don't know. It depends on the temperature and its mood. So back to the example, if we output 
zero volts on the queue, that's low. And if we output 3.3 volts, that's within the high range. So everything should be fine, right? Wrong. Not just the input has this range. Q's output also has a range for low and for high. So let's take a look. Um, great, great, great. <laughs> ah, they didn't watch my video or they don't care. Hmm. Um, documentation is great. So this is the microcontroller. We can go straight to the data sheet. Awesome. Output voltage characteristics. I'm interested in all IOs. So it depends on the output current, of course. If you draw more current, then the voltage drops. If we draw 20 milliamps from the pin, then the output voltage can drop to two volts, which is not much. Actually, it's not enough for a high signal. But in this case, we are not drawing current. We just connect two Arduinos, so there is barely current flow. And in this case, I would assume that, say, it's less than one milliamp. So this is worst case scenario here. But it's already bad because VDDIOX minus 0 0.4 means that we go down to 2.9 volts. And 2.9 volts is out of range. So it's not a clear high signal anymore. So this right here is our high range and low is below 0 0.4. So 0 0.4. So low is no concern. This will work, but high is a problem. So technically, if you connect an Arduino Uno Q to an Arduino Uno R3, some signals might get lost. Most likely everything will work fine, but at certain temperatures, or if you add a load to the signal, it might not work reliably. But the Uno R3 is all tech, right? What happens if we connect it to an R4? Let's look at the input characteristics of an RA4M1 microcontroller. Poo. So this is five volt tolerant ports. VCC times 0 0.8. So four volts up to 5.8. And low signals have a maximum voltage of VCC times 0 0.2, so one volt. So if Q outputs a high signal, it will always be somewhere below the high range. So it's always out of spec. The likelihood that this combination won't work is pretty high. All right, but most of the time you won't be connecting Arduinos to Arduinos, but Arduinos to shields. So let's look at shields. Here's the good news. Arduino added the IO reference pin a long time ago. It's designed to allow shields to be compatible with different voltage levels. But of course, there are old shields and shields that didn't implement this functionality. There are basically three ways you can check if your shield is compatible. The first one, sometimes the creator of the shield tells you if it's compatible with 3.3 volt boards. That's the simplest solution, of course. Second, most of the time you'll get a schematic of the shield. So you can double check the chips that are connected to the Arduino and then look at their data sheets. And the third, if there is no schematic available, then what you can also do is you look at the shield itself and read the markings of the integrated circuits and then check the data sheets of all the integrated circuits that might be connected to your Arduino. Let's look at some examples. All right, L293D motor shield. That looks like this. Let's see if we find a schematic. All right, so if you happen to have exactly this shield, then how can we check if it's compatible? Control voltage, that doesn't sound promising. This is the schematic, let's rotate it. We have two L293, so we have two of these motor drivers here. Data sheet, input voltage, high level input voltage, minimum 
So in this case, we're safe. And low level is up to 1.5. So also safe. This will work. There's also this thing here. This is also connected. Yes, this is also connected. So 74 HCT 595N. High level input voltage, minimum of two volts. Low level input voltage, maximum 0 0.8. So this will also work if they really used an HCT because there is also a chip that is called HC. For the HC variant, you have this problem that the input voltage needs to be a minimum of 0 0.7 times VCC. So for five volts, this is 3.5 volts and 3.5 volts is already out of range. So if your shield uses a chip called 74 HC and then a number, I wouldn't use it with the Q. It might not be reliable. If your shield looks like this, then you could exchange them. You could buy the HCT type and replace it and then it will work reliably. That's one way of doing it. What other shields might be problematic? So there's a thing called the NeoPixel. These are addressable LEDs, they are awesome. But if you look at the datasheet of an WS2812B, here you have the same problem, 0 0.7 times VTT. 3.5 to 5 volts is high. So we are out of range here. They might work or they might not work. I will make a video about how to convert this logic levels. And if it's already available, I will link it here. One last thing that I'm interested in is the MAX7219. Here we might have the same problem. Yes. So logic high input voltage, minimum of 3.5. So this is already out of range. Now in the beginning of the video, I told you that most likely nothing will get damaged. And there is one instance where I could imagine that damage is possible. And that is if the shield has a transistor that needs to be turned on. It usually gets five volts to be turned on. And now it gets 3.3 volts and it's not turned on properly. Because the thing about transistors is if you turn it off, then no current is flowing and the transistor is cold. If you turn them on, then a lot of current is flowing, but there is no voltage drop on the transistor. So the transistor most of the time also stays cold or let's say warm. <laughs> and the problem is in between. If the transistor is not turned on fully, but in a linear mode, so turn on halfway, then we have a voltage drop and current, and this results in power generated on the transistor. And this is what potentially kills the transistor. This is something that might happen with some shields. I don't know of any, but this is something that could happen. If you have a powerful transistor, check if it works with 3.3 volts. Please don't forget to like, hype and subscribe. Let me know what you think of Arduino Uno Q. Are your shields compatible or will you stick to Arduino R3 or R4? Maybe. And if you're using R4, please tell me why. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.